shop, Rob from Woodsley Summercraft here. Today is, I'm going to turn something other than a pen or a razor or a small spindle, which is what I've been doing for quite some time. I've got a lot of kits, so I've been turning a lot of kits lately. Um, and I haven't really done much other than that. But I've got this piece of wood here that's quite nasty looking. It's got mold all over it, but it's bone dry now. It was wet when I cut it. I think it's maple and uh, it's been drying for probably a year, maybe two years in a plastic bag and uh, I've slowly been letting it dry and there's actually two of them, there's another one over there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a bowl, calabash style bowl uh, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with it I'm going to make sure the top is more hollow form than it usually is, than I usually do and I'm going to put three feet on it so that's going to be interesting, I've got the idea from um, a lady on Facebook. Unfortunately I can't find who it was because Facebook tends to hide things from me as soon as I've, as soon as I've looked at them. Um, I should have saved the, uh, the post that she put up but I believe she had a couple of pieces put on a magazine and this was one of them. Now that was the inspiration for this piece. Uh, I don't know if this wood is going to call out for colour or if it's beyond turning, it might be too punky, I'm not sure yet, we're going to find out, but I think it's ready. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut this into a square right now, it's kind of oblong, longer than it is wide, it's about four inches deep, yep, just over four inches deep, it is nine and a quarter long by about seven inches wide, so we're going to make it seven inches square by four inches deep, we're going to cut that on the bandsaw, that will give us a good look inside the wood, see how much the spalting has gone inside the wood, and then we'll get it mounted to the lathe, and uh, we'll get it turned into a calabash style bowl with three feet. Lighting is not the best over here. I do need some more LED lights, um, but look at that. Isn't that pretty impressive, eh? I'm happy with that result. That's been in a black bag for a year. Fresh cut, nothing else added to it. It's bone dry now, but uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blade on the bandsaw to a quarter inch blade. This is a three quarter inch blade for doing straight cuts. I'm going to put a quarter inch blade on and turn that, cut that into a circle uh, and then I'll put it on the lathe and we'll start turning it into that piece of artwork I hope. Let's see. I have now installed the quarter inch blade. This one is, uh, I think it's 6 TPI. It's just what I was able to get at the time. 111 inches, 6 TPI for this particular uh, Raycon uh, bandsaw. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my face mask on with a respirator. I'm going to have the shop vac going so I'm sucking the dust away and uh, we'll get this cut. So whenever you're turning anything that's got fungus on it or nastiness, it's always a good idea to clean it. So I'm going to clean off the surface, the, the top two surfaces with uh, a little bit of alcohol, just to pull off any disgusting black stuff because it is literally covered. Um, just going to clean that off. Bringing my speed down low and gradually bringing it up, standing out the firing line. And just back it off when it starts to wobble.
Now we'll just have to make this a dovetail when we get to that point. I'm now going to start working on this corner. Okay, so this is by no means the last shape, but you can see how smooth this is. A little bit of tear out on the end grain, to be expected. Maybe a little bit punky there, but uh, generally it's, it's a pretty smooth cut. So I'm gonna continue removing this rough edge, and then we're gonna work on our shape. my skew here to make that dovetail. I've adjusted the tool rest height so that I'm on center. And I'll also make that center mark so that I can remove the tenon easier later. And that will be for my live center to go into as I nibble away at this later on. And then my feet will be around this. So I'm going to leave the bottom a little bit thicker than I normally would, just so that I can drill into it with my three feet. But uh, let's continue on with the shape. I'm liking this spalting a lot. And this is now a shape that I actually really like. It's approximately four and a half inches across the top and close to seven inches across the widest part. And then coming back down to nothing, this tenon will be removed at the end and then the three feet will get put in place out here somewhere. And then um, what I'm gonna do right now is seal this with sanding sealer. That will stiffen up the fibers, especially the punky areas. It's not too punky, but it's a fibrous and we got a little bit of tear out in a couple of spots but not it's not too bad uh, so let's do that let's put the sanding sealer on and then we'll start sanding this this should start to also bring out the colors I think it's gonna soak up a good amount of this sanding sealer because uh, it's quite dry and quite punky I, I decided against putting any color in there there's a little bit of a crack because there's a pit there I'm not gonna worry about that I might fill that in later towards the end This has now been sanded to 320 grit and I used sanding sealer between grits just to uh, make sure those fibers were sealed nicely and, and uh, stiffened up with the sanding sealer. So I've got a nice prepared surface now with the sanding sealer ready for Yorkshire grit. So what I'm going to do first is just denib it a little bit with a scouring pad.
Let's make sure there's no streaks in the finish. And now I'm going to apply Yorkshire grit over the entire surface. Okay, so there's no more product coming off on the towel. So now I can apply Hampshire Sheen Gloss to the entire surface and then I'll let that set up before I buff it in. Now this is the food and toy safe. Okay, that is now set up, it's gone tacky. So I'm gonna start buffing that in. And that is rather lovely, very shiny, nice finish. So before I turn it around, what I'm going to do is actually drill three holes around the perimeter of the base in preparation for my three feet. This is the indexing system on my Laguna lathe, it's the 1836 Revo. Now this plate slides up and down to give you the option of uh, 14, 36 or 48 positions for the indexing. I've got it on the 36 um, position option and then these are locked down these here are locked down and then uh, this is the pin that goes into the indexing plate I just have to push that in and then tighten it up and now my spindle is locked and inside you can see the indexing plate right here so now is not a good time to turn the lathe on. So you have the e-stop pushed when you're using the indexing system. Here on the spindle you can see the three positions for the numbers for the spindle lock. I'm using the center one which is the black square and uh, my positions will be 1, 13 and 25. That will give me three exact locations around the spindle which will allow me to drill my holes perfect alignment around here in thirds essentially setting up the blank like this so that I can drill on those lines now I know there's lots of jigs and things you can make for this but I haven't as yet got the jig made so I'm simply gonna hold the drill in the same position and drill in the depth of this force and a bit head which is about a quarter of an inch it's quarter of an inch in diameter and I'm gonna drill in a quarter of an inch once I've done that, then I can turn this piece around and hollow it out. So I'm thinking that I like that angle right there. The feet themselves are going to be like teardrop shape with a rounded base so that it doesn't really matter where the foot sits, it's going to sit nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that there. Okay. Now I'm going to move the spindle. Now I'm in position 13. locking that into position and that is my three holes drilled taking the indexing locking pin out so that it spins freely now and you can see my three holes 
they're as close as I need them to be because they're gonna it's gonna sit nicely on three legs like I said on four legs it might wobble a little bit but on three legs it can't so that is now my holes drilled happy with that now I'm gonna spin this around and we'll hollow it out the piece is turned around in the lathe and I've got the tool rest all set up so that I can use my bowl gouge I'm gonna face this off first clean up this edge and then I'll start hollowing it out As I start this cut, I got the tool rest set at the right height. It's far enough away from the bowl that my bevel isn't on the tool rest. So I'm going to have my flute closed facing that direction and the bevel in the direction of my cut, which is more like this, going into the wood. I don't want to just skip across the surface of the wood. So let's make the cut, we'll start the cut. As soon as it starts cutting and we have a place for the bevel to locate, we'll open up the bevel just a little bit and start our way into the bowl. Right, so that is the inside turned. I just have to sand it. My biggest concern would be uh, going through to those three little holes that I drilled. So I left the bottom a little bit thicker than I normally would. Um, I'm gonna leave it fairly sturdy because spalted wood is weaker wood than, uh, than regular wood. When it's got the spalting in it, yeah, it definitely is a little bit weaker. But uh, yeah, it should look nice when it's all done, hopefully. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand this, this top edge and on the inside I'm going to start with 60 grit and work my way up to 320 and then we'll get it finished and then we'll have to turn the feet. That is the inside now sanded to 320. I started at 60 grit because there was some punky areas. Um, but uh, I got rid of all of the punky, the punkiness that, uh, with the 60 grit and then gradually worked my way up to uh, 320 grit. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is give it a final seal, let that dry, denib it, and then we'll use Yorkshire grit and Hampshire sheen to finish that off. And then we'll get on to turning the three little feet. Do that top lip as well. Make sure everything is fully sealed and then uh, I'll come back when that's dry. That is now dry, and if you look in there, you might be able to see brush strokes 
from the uh, brush that I used to apply the sanding sealer. So that's why you need to denib it at this point before you use Yorkshire grit. So I just take a piece of a scouring pad and denib that whole thing inside. You could use the last grit of sanding paper that you used, which would be 320. But I just like to use a scouring pad. And then have a good look in there, make sure that there's no streaks of sanding sealer. And at this point I'll get Yorkshire grit out and I will use Yorkshire grit original on the inside. And now with a fresh paper towel, I'm going to take some Hampshire Sheen glass and put that on the inside. Just a thin coat is all you need. Just make sure it's all over. Okay, so this is now finished with Hampshire Sheen gloss and I'm taking this off of the chuck and now I have to reverse mount this and remove this tenon and then turn the feet. And on low speed, there it is perfectly centered. Just make sure that's in there good. Lock the quill, bring the banjo in with the tool rest and now we just need to nibble away at this until there's just a little nub and then sand this up as best we can and then we'll turn our feet So I've just made one of these, this is one of the feet for the bowl, I'm going to make two more so I'm just going to rough these out and try to make them the same as this. I dyed it black and I did use Yorkshire Grit and Hampshire Sheen on the end but not just there, I'm trying not to have any wax on here because that needs to get glued in to the bowl. Normally I'd use epoxy resin or something to put these in, into place, but what I'm going to be using this time is Starbond's flexible medium thick super glue. Um, I think it's going to be uh, adequate um, and flexible so that it won't um, become brittle. Just wipe off a little bit of excess there. And a quick squirt of accelerator. So long overdue wrapping up this video. It's taken me ages. Um, sorry about that. The piece was made quite a while ago now. But uh, finally getting the video out for you guys to, to check it out. I was quite pleased with the way it turned out. 
all things considered. It started out as a piece of pretty plain old maple that was very wet. So the process of drying the wood, spalting the wood, cutting and turning the wood, it's a lot of fun. So uh, don't be afraid to get out there and uh, spalt your own wood and, <laughs> and have some fun with it. Give it some feet and remove the tenon or the mortise so it's just smooth on the underside also. So I'll leave a couple of photographs at the end for you to check out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hopefully I'll get another video out sooner than later. Take care now.